So yeah, guys. You may be wondering, lazy what if or, or lazy? Why are you making so many what ifs? Because I'm bored. <laughs> That's it. I'm just bored. You might be thinking, oh, I'm not making that many what ifs videos. I mean, like, what if ideas? Like, why am I just putting out so many different like series but not finishing them? I'm just bored. That's it. I'm literally. It's almost midnight. Like eight minutes. I have a video that I recorded earlier today that's going to take a while to get up, and I am just bored, I couldn't sleep, not that tired, might be after recording this, because my body's like, you know what, you are going to record, but yeah, I'm still going to try and record. <sighs> you guys probably can't hear it, but my neighbors are playing uh, Mexican music in the background, I actually enjoy it. I don't hear Mexican music that often. Even though my family is mostly Hispanic. <laughs> I don't hear it that often. Anyway. So yeah. What if Deku was the Iron Fist? I don't think anyone's actually done this. And if they have, props to you. I've had this idea just sitting in my head for a while. Like once I was like, oh yeah, that's a that's a thing. It's like, hmm, that'd be a good what if idea. And I was like, yeah, let's watch some more videos on YouTube. So yeah, it's been like a week since I thought of it, or I don't know how long actually. But yeah, in this, we're I'm making it to where Chi. It's similar to Ki from like Dragon Ball, but Chi doesn't allow you to fly or anything. Chi is a energy, a spiritual energy. Just like Dragon, or just like Key from Dragon Ball, that basically flows throughout the body. So yeah, people naturally make it. I'm gonna say that's what powers quirks too. So in this, that's what powers quirks. And Deku does have a quirk in this. It's just he has a large amount of chi. His chi, like he gives off this like a rate like. It's just presence when it wherever he goes. He gives off this presence. Like if he's happy, you can you're gonna feel happy. If he's angry, you're gonna be angry or like you're gonna be happy around him, but if you're if he's angry, you're gonna be somewhat scared of him. Basically, he has a larger amount of chi than everyone else. He has an enhanced amount. And his emotions are somewhat implemented on people. If he's really angry to the point he wants to kill someone he could probably make someone, someone how Stain does it, be scared for their lives. So yeah. And Deku in this will basically have the Iron Fist's powers. But the way it happens is because Deku only has like a... He only has enhanced Chi, that's really it. He has to learn how to use Chi. And there's really no way to do that right now for him. But I'm going to say this is... They know this is his quirk, and they just think that his quirk is a, what they call it, they just think his quirk is just a larger amount of, like, chi, and they would notice that people, like, naturally give off this energy that powers quirks, and they would be like, this boy has a very large amount of this energy, why does he have that much energy, thinking that his quirk must be really powerful, well, they're like, his quirk must just be giving him a large amount of the this energy. I'm just gonna... They're just gonna name it Chi. Just because it's plot. So yeah. He'd have it. And I'd say that... He just... You know... He'd just be having this. Baku would think Deku's quirk is useless. But each time he wants to attack Deku, each time he gets near him, he just gets too happy because de half the time Deku is happy. But I'm going to say one day when Deku and Inko, they go on vacation during the summer. And Deku accidentally gets lost. He's roaming the city. Like, they were shopping. And Deku just starts staring at stuff. He starts walking around and he loses Inko. To the point where he... I'd actually say they were near woods. And Deku would just roam off because I think he might see like a weird like bug and he's like cool as he's just following it and they would be looking for Deku but after a couple like after a week or two they would have to give up the search because they would have to conclude that Deku is dead 
So yeah, but Inko still sad, but she would go back to the city, and she'd be really sad. But eventually, she'd move on, just like visiting Deku's grave here and there, like three times a week, most likely. But yeah. But what happened to Deku is he was actually found by, I'm going to say, similar to the, how the Iron Fist was found, he was found by a group of monks. The Iron Fist was in a plane, like in the show, I believe, he was in a plane, and the plane crashed because, well, people made it crash. Because his parents were rich, and they didn't like his parents, and they wanted more money, so yeah. They, instead of this, the monks find Deku when he's roaming the forest, because they have their temple in the forest, like, built into the, um, like, the side of a mountain. But no one really notices it half the time, because instead of inside the mountain, like, inside the side of it, I'm going to say it's literally on the inside of the mountain. The music just got louder. But yeah, Deku, for this, he's going to be found by them, and since I'd say he's about five-ish, they're going to take pity on him. They're going to take a large amount of pity on Deku. And they could also feel that the chi in Deku is very large. And they're thinking, he may be the one. He may be the one to harness the ancient power. So, they take Deku and they feed him. They say that if he wants to stay here, that he has to live the way they live. He agrees. And he starts training. He does get made fun of sometimes by kids. But they're all told to leave Deku alone because, well, one, he's an, he's an outsider. He is unique. He will not have the natural flexibility they have since they've been training since birth. He's only been here for a couple weeks. But Deku's always determined. He's always getting, he's always working out. He's always uh, training his martial arts. And Deku, by the age of 10, he would be, or younger than that, but he would be told about the Iron Fist, how the Iron Fist is a very unique uh, power, saying that it's similar to a quirk, but much, much more powerful if known how to harness it and use it. So, Deku basically, what he has to do is saying that in the people's body is chi, is what he's told. And that's what powers people's quirk. But he says that, or the monks tell him that, long before quirks came around, chi still existed. Chi was a natural energy that the people produced. And one person harnessed chi to such an extent that they gained an immense power. And, what, and they can use that, they use that power in their fists and hit someone, and they called that power the Iron Fist. So, Deku would hear this, and he's like, and the, the monks would say, what is his quirk? Because everyone would have a quirk. Like, everyone does have quirks, and they would train to use their quirks. And Deku would say, his quirk is called, just, uh, just, uh, I'm gonna say emotion bubble. It's basically there's like a bubble around Deku, and the larger the amount of chi he has, the bigger the bubble is. And basically, whatever mood he's in, his chi is being expelled outward because how large it is, and it makes other people in the bubble like feel the same emotion he's feeling, or like similar emotions to it. So. Like, so you have a large amount of chi then, saying that, yes, we could sense that you had a large amount, but we never noticed why. So, by the age of 10, Deku, I would say, actually accidentally uses the Iron Fist when training against someone. Because I'd say this would be the best person that he's going up against. People would be only cheering for that person. And Deku, they would be like, Deku would hit him a couple times, but the person is using their quirk, and they're doing pretty well. I'd say they have, like, a slight strength enhancement quirk, so just a little, like, 0.5%, or, like, a, um, point or 1.5% uh, boost in power than what they normally have, like, to their muscle. So, basically, 
if they can lift about 50 pounds, then they could probably lift about, like, if a person can lift 50 pounds normally, then that person who has, like, the 1.5 increase can lift about 75 pounds. So, yeah. Deku is basically angry because this person's mocking him. He's just dodging. I see Deku, when the person's about to attack, Deku actually turns around, accidentally charged a bit of chi in his fist, and hit that person. And Deku's fist was glowing for only a couple seconds, but as he hit him, that person went flying. That person went flying. So yeah. Deku at this point is just, people are just dumbfounded because they didn't think that Deku had that much power behind his punches. And the monks were just staring, like watching their battles, wondering if he'll ever unlock his power, because they think he would be the one to, and they're just like, it is time to train him in more advanced methods, so they put Deku through harsher training, harsher training than even the people who are born into the uh, monks go through, way harsher training, and Deku's getting, he's starting to train trying to use the Iron Fist, and I say by the age of 13, he can use it at will, but it's very weak. And by the age of 14, he is able to use it at will, like I said. But then he's also able to make it stronger and stronger by charging his chi into his fist. The longer he charges it, the stronger it gets. Somewhat like the, um, what's it called? Somewhat like the special beam cannon that Piccolo has from Dragon Ball. Yeah, similar to that. But... What's another thing? But he can't just be holding it. Like, if he holds it there, it's not just constantly getting powerful. It ha he has to concentrate on putting chi into it. He can hold the attack there, focusing it, but it doesn't matter how long he's focusing it. He needs to charge it and only charge it. But if he's holding the attack to be ready to attack, he's not going to be making it stronger. Unless he's able to run and then just make it stronger. But yeah, that takes a lot of concentration. And I'm going to say Deku can actually use this because I don't know why they don't do this. Since Chi can go out through the entire body, Deku can basically use Chi throughout his entire body. So he can basically do powerful kicks as well. He can do hits, like punches, equal to his kicks too. And Deku is a master martial artist. He'd also be very good with weapons. But Deku would be told that the power he has isn't a quirk. He's just utilizing what he was naturally born with. And it wasn't a quirk. It's what anyone can learn, but he's one of the probably one in one trillion people. <laughs> like one in one billion or one in one cup, like one in three billion probably, to actually be able to use his power. Saying that most people that do have the ability to use it aren't trained to. But Deku was lucky. He was trained to. And Deku would want to become a hero. One, to find his mom because he was separated from her. Two, so he can help the monks, like, pay them back. And they, and Deku's always been wondering how can he pay them back. The ones that help him. They give Deku one goal when, if he becomes a great hero. The number one hero. He has to basically buy the land that their uh, temple is on. Because over time, the city near it and the city surrounding it are slowly closing in that area and taking away from their land. So they want Deku to buy that land. So they can't take it away. If you get enough money, of course, you're going to be able to buy that land. And it's quite a bit of land, too. That's all the resources. So the people are like, it's going to cost a lot of money. So yeah. And Deku, the monks say for Deku, if he wants to go, he has to make his own money to buy food and supplies to go. He's not allowed to take weapons with them. He's only allowed to... Uh, actually, I'd say they would do one thing. Deku would have to use his acrobatic skills, because he's very flexible, and his martial arts skills, to basically earn money in the city, as like, an inter like a street entertainer, basically. And he would. And I think he'd be like just out there, just basically being very flexible, being always just like acrobatic moves and people are just amazed by him and he'd make quite a bit of money doing it every every like other day just yeah every other day he does it 
and new more and more people are starting to come and watch him, give him more and more money. And he eventually has enough money to, I'd say, like, a couple thousand dollars. He's not trying to, like, I'd say this is about, about 14 and a half. Yeah, Deku's about 14 and a half. I know that's a bit young, but yeah. He is basically, he has all this money. He, he buys a backpack. He is, uh, what's the word? He is buying food at a store, and he mostly buys, like, two things. He mostly buys, like, two things. Rice, and a pot to cook the rice in. And then some seasoning. But he also buys, like, a water purifier so he can drink water from, like, a slow stream. And some containers to keep water in, like, two... Actually, I think he just, like bring a water skin because I think Deku would have his own water skin so he'd take that and just fill it up so yeah and he would be given because I'd say Deku even at 14 and god knows I need it and I'm only 14 guys uh, I think I was in like I don't know what you guys might call it but I was like 5th grade 4th grade and I already started growing facial hair <laughs> Puberty hit me early, so yeah, it would also hit Deku early, and you can tell on the right picture that my man here has a fantastic beard and mustache, so yeah, I think Deku would also have facial hair growing, so he'd be given one knife to, one knife, a cloth, and something sh like a small like sharpening stone to sharpen the knife, to basically, actually I say two knives, one well, a knife to cook with, like to cut stuff, only meat though, you can't use it as a weapon, and a straight edge. If you don't know what a straight edge, straight edge is, it's a uh, razor, like a, uh, it's basically what people used to shave with instead of like the razors you see nowadays, like the ones that you just go down, no, a straight edge is a, have you seen like a razor blade, it's somewhere like that, but thicker, longer. And you use it to shave a, an entire area of a beard. Yeah. That's a straight edge. So basically Deku has a straight edge. And that's really it. He has like a couple of pounds of rice. He has uh, a pot. Some water. Some stuff. And a token from the... The, uh, what's it called? I think he would have a token from his... Uh, temple like his buddhist temple the monks he would get one token from them before he leaves a tattoo Deku will have a tattoo of a dragon on his back for one and he would have another tattoo of a dragon also on his hand his right hand Actually, you know what? Yeah. I'd say on his back and his right hand. Or actually, no, just his back. That's it. He'd have a dragon tattoo on his back. And I don't remember what the name of the monastery or, like, the temple that the Iron Fist actually went to. But I'm going to call this temple the... Yeah, I'm just going to go with that. The Iron Dragon Temple. So yeah, they call it the Iron Dragon Temple, and Deku has the tattoo of the dragon, you know, like the picture, like a dragon on the left side, he has basically that on his back. So, it takes Deku from about, I'd say like five months to travel, because he's still in Japan, because he lives in Japan. It takes him to, from where he was, to all the way to the other side where he used to live. Basically... It took him a couple months to get there, but he did do pretty well. And the chi basically, Deku is naturally outputting chi around him, but he can basically focus the chi to stay in his body, and that enhances his body naturally. So he has a lot of stamina too, so I'd say he'd be running half the time and walking. But yeah. And 
he just be walking. People would try and give him rides, but he said he always refuses, saying that he wants to finish this journey that he uh, basically went on with his own strength. And people notice that Deku's wearing these weird robes, and they ask what he is. Deku says he is a former monk of a temple. They ask what does he mean former. Deku says he left the temple because he want he was there as a kid because he got lost from his parent his mom, and he says that he wants to go find her. And the uh, people at the temple gladly let him go. They knew he was capable by himself. And people are like, are you sure? I mean, you seem kind of young, but they would be tall. He'd probably have a bit of facial hair, but yeah. And Deku, by the time he gets there, it's at the beginning of the anime. Deku is also smart in this. He's quite smart, actually. But he would basically get there with Sludgerland is attacking Bakugo. He would have, like, a slight beard growing, like, about how this guy has. He wouldn't have the mustache, but he'd have the beard. Probably a bit of, like, mustache growing. Not a lot, though. And he's like, well, why aren't they doing anything? So he basically sets down his bag that he has. Start charging up a hit. And it's just like, how much? He's like, 5%. And basically, how long it takes for Deku to charge his uh, attack is it takes him 2 seconds to charge 1%. So for 5%, it takes about 10 seconds to charge that. If he's, like, not concentrating. But if he's concentrating, it takes about 5 seconds to do 5%. But it's like... 5% and only 5%. As he's charging it and he starts running, he's still charging it, which is taking a bit longer, but as soon as, no one was even able to grab him, but as soon as he basically goes over there, he punches the sludge villain, and the sludge villain explodes everywhere. Like, sludge is everywhere. So yeah. He basically, yeah, the sludge villain's just gone. About the same as what happened with All Might punching him, but in a more confined area. And people are like, what the heck was that? And they're looking at Deku, and they're like, what is this quirk? He only did one punch. That thing is gone. And Deku is basically walking over. He picks Baku up, stands him up, and he's like, huh, boy looks familiar. He's like, thinking, this guy looks familiar. Eh. I got stuff to do. As he's walking over, he grabs his bag, puts it over his shoulder, and starts walking again. And he looking at reflections like, I need a shave. It's like, I'll go get a hotel room, shower, shave. Yeah, that'd be nice. As he's just walking, people are staring at him, and they're like, who, who is he? Is he a hero? He doesn't look that old, but then again, he has the beard. But he's also quite powerful. Baku's like, who, who is that? Who is that? He's like, Deku's a bit, sh uh, he's like, he's about Mirio, probably a bit more than Mirio, like buff. And Deku's basically running. We're not running, but he's just like, walking. And he would be confronted by All Might. Because one, All Might saw Deku was like, This person right here, my successor. Because I don't see why All Might actually chose Deku. Plot convenience, I know, but yeah. But no, like, it doesn't have to be a student. He was going to choose Mirio, because it saw great potential in him. But. You, you guys do realize it doesn't even have to be a hero. He just has to pass on all for one. Or not all for one. One for all. He has to pass it on. That's it. Pass it on to one person. That person can pass it on to another. And then they pass it on to a hero. It'd come out of nowhere. But yeah. This is what... Uh, at this point... Uh, all Might is talking to Deku. He buffs down. Deku knows of All Might, but he's not his favorite hero. Because he thinks All Might's too flashy, stuff like that. And at this point, All Might asks Deku to be a successor. He explains his quirk, and Deku's like, no. He just flat out says it. No. 
I was like, why not? Dagger says he doesn't want anyone's court. Um, the music stopped. But yeah, he says he doesn't want anyone's court. He has his own quirk that is pretty powerful, and it took him years to train to get as powerful as he is. So he's not going to cheat the years of training he did by accepting a power boost. I was like, it's not cheating. But Dagger says, well, to you it may not be, but to me it is. He says, thanks for the offer anyway. I might at least ask for Deku to try and, like, at least, oh, what's the word? Like, train him? Deku says, he's had years of training, but he'll accept the offer anyway. He's basically thinking, I've had years of training, I don't need to be trained by anyone. And by this person of all, like, it's not that he doesn't dislike All Might, he's just thinking that All Might's too flashy, he's always, like, showing off to people. So, yeah. So, Deku at this point is with All Might, and they're talking, and All Might asks, how old is Deku? He's like, how old are you? Deku says, about 15. Oh, you're 15? You're that muscular, that tall, and a beard with a mustache going? Deku says, yeah, I guess it's from all the training. My body just started producing all the, uh, what's like? Basically, he says that he hit puberty pretty early. Thanks to all the, like, the training he did, all the food, it just just kept fueling the uh, puberty. And he hasn't shaved in a while either, so yeah. So, he says that he's going to go get a hotel room, shower, and shave. All my thinking, hotel room. He has Deku where he lives. Deku says, well... He doesn't really live anywhere. Well, not anymore. He did stay at a nice place. Lots of nice people there. Well, mostly nice. But yeah. He says he used to live at this really big place, but he moved, like, he left so he could find his mom. I was like, find your mom? What do you mean? Douglas says when he was a kid, he was separated from her when they were on vacation. And now he's here to find her because this is the city they used to live in. And he's hoping he can find clues to where she is. And at this point, I was like, maybe I can help you. On one condition, though. Because since Deku doesn't really live anywhere, All Might wants Deku to basically be able to train with him. But since he can't take one fall, since he already agrees, he's not going to force one fall onto Deku. He says that he wants Deku to stay at UA. There's like, Stay at what you mean? The hero school? Like, did they implement like dorms or something? All my says no. Well, that would be a good idea. He says, we were, I was just gonna have uh, a couple connections done so we can have a house built there for you. And Dirk says, that's nice, but you don't have to do that. All my says, please, you don't really live anywhere. And it's not trying to be rude, but he says, and then again, your mother could have moved too. So if she's not here, where would you have stayed? Besides, at your when you're at UA, I mean you can train freely. You don't have to hold back there. Deku says fine. As they head to UA, All Might would call a car probably just for them to go faster. And I think Nezu would be in there. Nezu would just be wanting to talk to Deku because All Might would have talked to Nezu about Deku. Ask what Deku actually wants for his house. Deku says well. He wants, he doesn't need that much, because he's been trained that way. He says just, a big backyard to train in. He says, somewhat like a zen garden, and then away from the zen garden, a training area. Some weapons, because he has to keep up his weapon training. Some punching bags, some logs to hit as well. Then he says... Hmm, that's another thing I may need. So that's really it. Zen Garden. And training area. And he says for the house, he'll just take a... One bedroom. Yeah, I say he's a, he's a about one or... Yeah, actually, I think he say two just to be safe. Like, uh, so he could have like a storage room just for any extra stuff he has. So he'd say two bedroom... 
uh, uh, two bedroom, one bathroom with, well, a kitchen and a living room. And, and as you'd like, so what would you like? An Aztec who says, mm, a table for the kitchen, two chairs, just in case that anyone wants to come over, a tea set, and herbal green and jasmine tea. He's like, herbal green and jasmine tea. No, he's like, so you like tea, do you? Deku says yes. Deku answers yes, and Nezu's like, well, me and you have to spend some time together then, because I also am a g big fan of tea. Deku says, then let's, have, then let's have some tea sometime. And then he goes on to say that for the rooms, he'll just have one small, like, bed for, like, in the corner with a one dresser for his clothes, a, oh, what's it, like, what else is there? Uh, he'd say, like, a small TV. I think he would have, he would ask for TV. One small TV for the living room, like, a TV for the living room, a small or medium-sized couch, a small table for the living room, like a coffee table or whatever that goes in there. For the kitchen, he'd also like just regular like pans, pots, some of that stuff. And as you ask, like, what type of food would Deku like? He just says, uh, fish, rice, white chicken, or, well, any type of chicken. He says that He'll eat any type of food that is put in front of him, because that's the way he's been raised. But he does say he does prefer fish with, or like he says, grilled fish with rice, or uh, grilled chicken with steamed vegetables. And he basically just says that stuff, like, it's quite healthy. And... That's really all he asked for. And Dick also says for the backyard he'd also like a shed so he can keep all of his like items in, like uh, all the punching bags and stuff just in case he needs to put them up for like a rainy day or anything. So we skip to that. Mario would be given one for all. And Deku would be introduced to Mario. They would train. And Deku would stay in a hotel for like a week or two. A couple weeks actually. And does this ha Deku's house wouldn't be that hard to build, mostly because one reason, quirks. So yeah, Deku would basically have his place built pretty fast, but he's been uh, he's just been meditating a lot, training with All Might, and he's been mostly hanging around Nezu. He might meet uh, Aizawa here and there. He meets mostly Nezu, and he's mostly being taught by Nezu. And Nezu's surprised on how smart Deku is, seeing as how he's lived as a uh, Buddha, or like as a... What's the word again? Nomad? No, no, no. I don't remember. But yeah. He doesn't be surprised on how like smart Deku is. So... After, like, for Deku and Mario when they're training, since, uh, since, uh, Chi powers quirks, Deku's able to manipulate his own Chi. And, I don't think he'd be able to do what I'm thinking. You know what? I might put a poll in this video, I'm not sure, but yeah. Do you guys want it to where Deku can basically make a sword or like different weapons with a chi, yes or no? I shouldn't have brought this up because then again, too OP already. You know what, never mind, I'm not even going to do that. He can only use his fists, besides he is a master martial artist. But anyway, like I was saying, 
he can manipulate his chi in any different way, but what he could do is somewhat like cork nullifying, but not fully. He can slow down the chi in someone's body by attacking their chi with his own chi, somewhat blocking it, and as he's fighting Muriel, he'd hit some punches on Muriel, some regular punches. And Deku, even without using the Iron Fist, is a formidable, formidable, blah, formidable foe because he has years of experience and training, and he's a master martial artist. And he, each time he hits Mario, he's pumping a bit of his chi into Mario, basically slowing down his own uh, quirk. And I think the way it would work for uh, Mario's like, permeation, what it actually do, is it basically... Uh, how do I put that? You know how, like, um, how do I put this? Basically, instead of, like, Mario, like, fully phasing through stuff, it's basically, like, he, you can still, like, he can still phase, but it's, like, slower, and he actually takes quite a bit of damage from it. So, yeah. He basically, so, yeah. He'd basically be taking damage from Deku, even though he's trying to permeate. He's like, what the heck's going on? And eventually, everyone, like, Nidai would be wondering, what is going on? All Might's wondering, what is going on? And Deku would win, and Mirio's still having trouble. And basically, Deku was going over to Mirio, pulling all of his, like, excess chi that's still in Mirio out, so he can use his quirk properly. And Deku says that, uh, quirks are powered by chi. And everyone's like, chi. It's like, oh, do you not remember? Quirks are powered by a special energy that everybody produces. Saying that. His quirk allows him to uh, have a very large amount of chi. And then he learned how to use that chi. Saying that he's able to basically pump his own chi into someone else. And since it's not their chi, it, any chi is unique to someone else, it basically acts like a barrier, slowing it down. Saying that Mirio uh, kept losing because Deku was pumping his own chi into Mirio each time he hit him. Pumping a bit into him. Saying that his chi is being slowed down. So his quirk isn't as effective. So people are like, you can do that? Deku says, yes. So like it's somewhat like a quirk nullifier. Deku says, sort of. But he says more like a quirk weakener. He can't nullify any, anyone's quirk, but he can weaken them. To an extent. So like, that's pretty cool. And I think Deku wouldn't even have to take the entrance exam because everyone sees him as way too powerful. He'd actually take the uh, the recommendation. So yeah, he'd take the recommendation. And when he's there, he meets... Uh, yeah, I'd say he meets... <sighs> a Todoroki. He'd meet... Uh... Yamoshi, Hiroshima, something I don't remember his name. I'm just gonna call me Yamoshi until I feel like searching it up. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. But yeah. He is basically meeting them. Todoroki, he feels Todoroki's cheese like. He has a lot of turmoil. Very angry and moody. He's like, emo. He's emo. And then, we ha then he feels like all the other people who's like, really like just around him who are very like happy calm somewhat nervous then we have Yamoshi over here who is a, a freaking flower brighter than the sun but yeah he is just very excited and he comes up to Deku Deku introduces himself he does the same and they're talking, but then they have to do the exam. And Deku, when running, he's very fast naturally, and he has a lot of stamina. But I say he even boosts his speed even more by using his chi throughout his leg, like throughout his body. He's like, faster, faster, gotta be faster. As he's running faster, he basically beats everyone there. And people are surprised on how fast he moved, and like, how, like, each time, after a couple seconds, he'd get faster and faster and faster. Slowly boosting himself. And they would, some people would even notice that, like, the area Deku stepped, 
do like each time you step, the like the foot would go deeper and deeper into the ground. That's how much force he was extorting or like outputting. But we skip past that because that's all we really know. Deku gets about first in there. So yeah, Deku is basically just overall good. He's just good. He's great. But when we get to the uh, the next day, Deku's there. He gets there pretty early. Probably earlier than anyone. And since he knows Aizawa, he knows he's in there. But he's like, we do the same thing Aizawa does. And I'd say that Deku basically just goes to his seat with his sleeping bag and sleeps. So yeah. So he just sleeps for a bit. As people start rolling and they're wondering who this guy is. And I think Aizawa, I don't remember where he puts his sleeping bag. I'm saying he just puts it in his desk. And uh, when Aizawa comes out, Deku has this thing folded up. And he basically, as it's folded up, Aizawa comes out and starts, he's about to talk. But Deku basically tosses it at Aizawa. He's like, Aizawa's like, oh, why? But he's like, at least it's already folded. He grabs it, just puts it in his, uh, his desk. And people will notice that Deku threw it. And he's like, why did he throw it at that guy? And at this point, everyone's like, as I says, since everyone like, still was already quiet, but he says, everyone be quiet. He's like, telling everyone to shut up. He's like, Just be quiet. He would explain everything. And I think All Might would see Deku's tattoo here and there, so he would ask about it. Deku says it's one of the many things he got from his years of training, saying that it resembles his dedication, his power, and the lifestyle he's chosen. So, All Might doesn't really think much about it besides, I'm going to say the place where Deku got this, the laws are a bit different, so yeah. So anyway, Deku... He goes into the boys' locker room. He slowly starts changing. People are noticing, like, all the scars on his body, but they're also noticing how muscular he is. And then they notice the big black tattoo dragon. And they're wondering, is that a tattoo? Does he have a tattoo? And they were all wondering who he is. He, like, he looks depressed and sad. And he has that tattoo. Why well, doesn't look depressed and sad? He looks tired. So yeah, he looks tired and he's just like, he has this tattoo. So yeah. And it's, I think Kurishima would ask Deku what the tattoo is. Deku says that he trained as a monk in a temple for quite some time. And before he left to show that he was a monk, he got this as a mark. Saying that everyone gets the mark. And I'm going to say everyone does, but Deku gets, like, if you... Everyone else gets, like, a smaller version of it. Like, they may get it on their hand, their arm, their shoulder, like, somewhere like that. And it's very, very small. But Deku got it on his back. And they would ask, like, why do you get it on your back then? Did you choose it to be on your back? And Deku says, no. You don't choose where it is. Saying that. They say the body represents different parts of, like, what you are. So some people are more, like, strategic. Strategic. And they'd have it on, like, their left hand. And some people are more, like, brute force. And they have it on their right hand. Some people are more weighted out and don't attack. They'll get it on, like, their left soldier. Or soldier. Left soldier. Shoulder. There we go. And people are more, like, endure all the punches. Endure all of them and then attack. So, yeah. They're like more defense and tire out the person, and they'll get it on their uh, right shoulder. And Deku, a mixture of everything, so they put it on his back, saying that he has been considered one of the, if not the strongest, in the temple. As he basically puts on his shirt and just walks out, people are wondering, he's weird. Bob is like, he is very, very weird. But yeah. We get to the, uh, we get to, 
Where is it? Oh, yeah, the quirk assessment test. We go out there. Bach goes and seemed it got first in the entrance exam. He would go and he would yell, die like he normally does. He'd do about the same. And I think that uh, Deku would do pretty well for the running exam. He'd do pretty well because uh, he's pretty fast. I think faster than Ida by far. So, yeah, he's faster than Ida. Uh, for the long jump, he's he can jump pretty high naturally because like all the like, training he's done. But then implement his chi into that, strengthening his legs. He jumps pretty high as well and pretty far. With his um, what's the other one? Hmm. So I decide. Uh, jumps he does pretty decent probably about third ish he got first in the running first in the jumping or tied first and then he also got like third in the long or side to side jumps for the uh grip strength he does pretty well basically also putting his chi in his hand to increase his strength so yeah he does pretty well I'd say get about tying with whoever got first, which I think was Shoji, so I think he tied with them. Then we also have the ball throw. So yeah, the ball throw is pretty, pretty easy. Deku basically charges his chi in his hand for a bit, and people notice that his hand is starting to glow, and they're like, what the heck is that? Why is his hand glowing? And some of them can feel the energy coming off of Deku. But then he throws it. And it goes pretty far. So yeah. Probably farther than what he did in canon. So yeah, probably about... i say 872. Like 872 uh, meters. So yeah. So for the sit-ups, he does pretty well. Sit-up toe touches, he does pretty well. Long run, he does pretty well. In general, he does pretty well. Anyway, guys, I'm going to see you later. I am now getting tired. It is almost 1240. See you guys later. Bye.